Hello, and welcome to our new season of 3D Printing Thursdays. My name is Matthew, and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video, we'll be talking about 3D printing custom grips and the steps we can do to improve the parts quality and reduce the cost of our print. Creating custom grips, especially with softer material like TPU, is a great way to add human factors to a part and improve the overall feel for your users. If we want to 3D print a grip, we will first need to create a mesh file of the grip that we will send to our printer, which may be tough without proper tools since all hands have a unique shape and would be hard to model. Thankfully, we can use some engineering tools to capture not only the object we want to design the grip around, but the mold of the grip as well, which is how we'll create the bulk of this using 3D scanning. We'll start by 3D scanning our object, which our gripping will go over, giving us the necessary dimensions and shape we'll need to position our part around. Since this object is long with a small diameter, we will need to scan it in three positions to properly align our scans together. Plus, we can scan other parts of this object and align them to the main body scan if we wish to reverse engineer other parts and want them to be properly aligned and scaled. Once we have the object scanned, we will make our molded grip and 3D scan it as well. In order to keep the shape of the mold, we will only scan this in one position, so we don't deform anything. The first mesh we will create is using a sharp fusion algorithm, keeping most of the sharp edges of the mold. If we were to print this, however, we'll find that these small cracks will cause issues with our printing path and surface quality of the final part. Or, if they are too deep or have sharp angles, supports will be needed, which will further reduce the quality and increase our cost. Since we want this to be as smooth as possible, we'll reprocess the scan using a smooth fusion algorithm within Artec Studio. Still, our mesh isn't fully smooth as we would like. Again, we don't want any indents within our mesh file, since this will translate to our 3D print. Additional smoothing will be done on the mesh of the mold until we have a nice, even surface quality throughout the entire mesh. With scanned parts, it's difficult to find a proper orientation that will secure our part to the bed, since it will never truly have a flat surface. To make the bottom of our part flat so we can print off of it, or help with alignments, we will keep the table within our mesh so we can use a cutoff plane tool to erase the underside of the gripping. Thanks to the table, we will have a clean, flat cut on the bottom of our mesh that we can hole fill and re-smooth to the rest of the mesh. It's also good to check the internal space of the mesh with tools like X-Ray to ensure no parts of the mesh are inside of itself, making it non-manifold and would be difficult to print. We can see the difference between our sharp fusion and our newly smoothed mesh when they are overlaid. Overall, the mold kept its shape, but we have removed all infolded and sharp edges from the mold that would affect the surface quality and the ability to print. The next step is to align the grip to our part and check that it is properly sized to envelop the entire handle. What we are checking for is that it is big enough to fully wrap around with enough room to have a proper wall thickness, which is about two millimeters. After an initial alignment, it isn't big enough to properly wrap around the handle with enough room. It was increased in scale by 25%. With the scaling, it is now large enough that we have plenty of room to comfortably print the part with our handle cut out and have space for our printed walls. At this point, our gripping is looked well-placed and has the smoothing we'd want. In order to remove the handle from the grip, we have two approaches, modifying the mesh itself or converting the mesh to a solid and making the cuts then. First, a cylinder of the handle is extracted from the saver's mesh, just so we have an exact position of the handle to boolean away from our grip. As discussed earlier, this mold would be nearly impossible to model as a solid. Thankfully, we can auto-surface the mesh, which will automatically convert it into a solid using a series of surface patches and export it as a step body to bring into other programs. If we don't plan to make major changes to the mesh beyond a hole cutout or an elongation, this is a perfect method to give us a solid body from the mesh to use parametric tools to further modify the part. With our solid bodies created, both the auto surface and the handle cylinder, we can export them from Artec Studio. Moving into SOLIDWORKS, our custom grip, handle location, and a mesh of the Sabre are all imported into a part file. We can modify the imported bodies further using parametric tools to adjust the handle's diameter that is cut from the grip, have a flat surface on the bottom to print from, and even elongate it more if needed. 
Because we smoothed the mesh well before auto surfacing it, our solid body of the grip is easily able to be modified and less likely to have a chance of error when making changes like we are. With the custom grip modeled now and our cutout made, we just have to re-export it as a mesh file so we can send it to our printer. When exporting the mesh, make sure that your settings are made to have a high quality export mesh, so we don't pixelate our solid bodies during the export and conversion phase to an STL. On the flip side, if we have too high of a setting, our mesh will be several megabytes in size and may not properly import into our printing software. It's good to experiment with these settings until you find what works for you quality and file size wise. The final step is to choose settings within our printing software that allow the least amount of material but still keep a decent surface quality. Since the part will be printed in TPU and a Mark Forged printer, we can use Iger to adjust the preview and infill. These are also settings that you may need to find a balance on depending on your preferences. As we thicken our infills and walls, the TPU will become stiffer, so we will reduce both of these values and change our infill type to allow less thickness to be used, giving it a nice spongy material which is what we want with a custom gripped TPU print. Supports were kept on, but looking at our x-ray view, we do not have any supports since our overhangs are so subtle it isn't required. We also have plenty of room between our walls to allow infill geometry. To recap all the points we've discussed, we will want to smooth our mesh as much as possible to reduce cracks, sharp edges, and non-manifold areas prior to any CAD or mesh export. We want to have a flat bottom of our scanned mold so that we can properly place it on a print bed. This can be done using parametric modeling tools or by modifying the mesh. We want to export the mesh with a decent mesh quality so it doesn't become pixelated during the export phase and as such affect the final quality of our mesh in the printing software. Finally, we will want an infill and wall thickness setting that will allow us to maintain surface quality but still be flexible enough for our needs. As with all modeling, there isn't a single right way, so keep in mind that these steps that we took to make this part is just one approach. Using the stated points, however, you can create amazing quality parts that keep their ergonomic shape and have a successful print each time. I hope you find this video helpful in knowing the steps that can be taken to creating custom 3D printed grips. Please subscribe to our channel to view our future videos for 3D printing Thursday, or find more information on other engineering softwares and tools. And may the fourth be with you.